Hello everybody and welcome to this tutorial in which I will show you obviously how to model this book rack. This is all in direct modeling based on a very simplistic sketch and we will solve everything via direct modeling tools. Okay, let's do it. Here we are in a new document. We will set our unit system to inches and then right click and set the environment to direct modeling. We can start everything by a basic sketch from the top. Let's take a look at it this way and zoom in new sketch on this yellow plane. And we will start with the center rectangle. Click, drag this one out. And this should be one foot by six feet. So you see I typed in one and then the foot symbol and then also um, six feet for here. And it converted it automatically into inches. Pretty cool. Okay, very nice. Okay, so finish sketch. There we are. Extrude this one. We move up by one inch. So now we have a simple body. Then we can go back to this sketch. I will hide the body here for the moment. And I will draw actually the frame. The shelves will sit inside next to it on purpose. So I don't kind of like mess around here. Bring this out to there. Make this on purpose a little bit cricket. So we get a little bit of practice working like with the constraints. So everything is nicely horizontal and vertical. And in here, these perpendicular constraints, I replace with the horizontal vertical. These two lines, I would like to be always the same. So equal. Now I can press D or I use the sketch dimension and say this should be one inch. And then here, this should be one inch too. I could also, by the way, say, because I have a small segment here, these two segments are the same. And if I make this two or one, you see how actually this grows equally. This works really out well because I have two little lines that describe kind of like, well, there's a rectangular cross section inside. Okay, very nice. That's all we need. Now there's our board. Uh, so this is, when I click on it, 72 inches long. We can go to extrude, select this profile, 72 inches, and then this operation switch from new body to join, and we switch this back to body. Thank you. Okay. I would like this board to look like a metal frame. So I select each face, the shell command, and then we say one inch. Look at that. Pretty cool. This goes quite fast. Now I have this one on the one side. I will later have this on the other side. I will also have a piece in the center. So maybe I go back here to this sketch and do the following. So I will have a center piece and I'm just kind of like sketching this out on purpose. You see how with my mouse, I go to a position where I see a triangle and that's the midpoint. Let me drag this further away there. And then I go to the midpoint there. So the nice thing about midpoints is, well, yeah, it's kind of centered. So at this point I can move around. And if I select this and then say vertical horizontal, ta-da, pretty cool. Now um, I can even here check this out, say, so this is equal to this one. 
So one inch, and then even here, u and u are equal. So this is now one inch of a cross section. Just to show you how this works, if we make this to three, this updates. See, pretty cool. So sketching in uh, something like Fusion, because it's a sketch engine, is very dynamic. It's not like in Illustrator. This line, I would like to be a construction line. We can do this here. Or you press the X key. Pretty cool. So now this is centered. And maybe from here to the center, I would like to have also another helper. There, I make another piece. And again, a little bit of practice. Don't really like these perpendicular things. There, there, and there. And hey, check this out. Collinear. I can make this line always look at this line. Suck. And then maybe u equal to u. There. So this is now uh, one inch. This automatically is one inch because this is one inch. And let's specify a distance. This is four. Let's make this six inches. There. Okay. Now everything what I show here again, and I will say this a lot, there's just one way how you can do this. That's a cool thing of CAD or 3D modeling. There are many ways how we can do this. There's always a matter of what's more work, what's less work, what's easier to do and modify, what's more complicated. So now I have actually these points, no? Pretty cool. So that means, hey, I can now go to move um, body. So this one and point to point and move this from this point to this point. Cool, okay. Let's do this one more time. This one, but as a copy from this point to this point. Very nice. Also, let's make a mirror. So here, mirror you along this yellow plane. Suck. And then here, dissolve those. Be gone. Cool. Okay. So we have a problem now. The board is actually intersecting with this part. Think about it the, the way how I our model this is we're inside a wood shop. Now we build our individual parts and then step by step we start putting these pieces together into an arrangement. And that's kind of like what I'm doing. So this I would like to move up by exactly one inch. So the thickness of the material. Now, I would like to actually have the space in between filled. Now I can select this line. That gives me a length of 70 inches. I would like to have five of these pieces or six. That's on six inches. So 70 minus six inches makes 64 divided by, that is way too much math. We are designers. We fortunately have tools to solve these pattern problems. So we go to create pattern, rectangular pattern. I can click this piece, axis, select this axis, move this one up. I can specify the amount, oh, pretty cool. But now I need to exactly know the distance from the top face to the distance of this face. Uh, yeah, ha ha, what is this? So we need to cancel this one moment. So one face and second face with shift select it. There, 69 inches. Ah, okay. Rectangular pattern, one more time. Zip. So 69. And then let's see how many pieces do we want. The first and the last or the bottom and the top pieces I will take out. So now we have four and we have five and six, seven, eight pieces in between. So one, two, three, four, five. Now oh, it looks pretty good. Click okay. And this one I can hide 
or I simply delete it. Same here. Yeah, it doesn't look actually too bad. Now, maybe at this point, we have number one, number two, number three, right click, make a group, should shift select those three and drag them into that group. Right click, new group or folder, and I put them in there. So I can easily turn all the stuff on and off or off and on. Okay. Possibly at one point we also would like to, um, yeah, we need brackets now. How do we put these um, wooden boards inside these frames? Now this is now kind of like a next step. So somewhere between this face and this face, right under this face, I would like to model something in. And what we will do is we will select this face and then create a sketch on it. Okay, I rotate my view. There you see kind of like where the grid is. And I would like to trace a line where this sketch intersects actually with this plane. So we can find this actually here, intersect. You notice when I go to the edge, it's a point on this face, it's a line, click and okay. Now there's a new line. That's actually pretty cool. I can, to make things easier, turn everything else off, go to line command, and then draw a line down, draw a line, 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 and there. Here, horizontal, vertical, horizontal, equal, U, and U, U and U, so they're all symmetrical. And then I can press D or go to dimension and say this should be 1.5 inches and this should be 0.25 inches. Oh, look at that. Um, because the way how we set the dimensions, this is all correct. I yeah, create a driven dimension this is all correct. It only creates a readout, not a dimension that can adjust everything. So what's the space in here? So I have one uh, 1.25 inches of space to maybe add, um, kind of like either we weld it onto it or we mirror the screw or something. Very good. Now well, this is kind of like all I only need. So I will turn off the sketch. Oops, sorry, uh, wah, wah, wrong one. We need the sketch. We go to extrude and then this piece, I would like to extrude, but I would like to just tell the software the distance. So I know this is one inch, but I could go to extend type to object and then select this face. Suck, obviously new body, there we are. See, good designs don't have to be very complicated in terms of the shape, etc. I wouldn't necessarily say that simplicity is always the thing what people want to shoot for. Specifically with students at the beginning, I very often hear, well, it's simple, it's clean. It's like, no, you didn't put a lot of work into it. Um, I was a student myself, so I know how that goes. But the thing about good design is also working with repetition, with patterns, showing that there's really a thought process that's behind it. Like one frame and one board is going to look kind of boring, but now you see with quantity, it actually starts to yeah look like something. So we need to have these brackets multiply too. So from here to here, what's the distance? 29.5. Okay, so we know. Now that's going to be easy. Pattern. Um, so this one along this axis. And then I can drag this one out. And I would like to change this to the spacing in between should be 29.5 inches. And if that math in my head is correct, it should right land on it. And it does. Cool. So now, 
uh, wrong pattern. This pattern I can, or basically here, these objects I mirror over to the opposite side. So now I have all those. Cool. Um, from here to here, what's that distance? 46. Okay. So all those, we do another pattern vertical. Woo. Um, that was actually uh, the extent. So 46. And we have five all in between. Yep, this all is good. Okay, there we are. Oh, quite many pieces, maybe new group. And then all those we put into that group. And then these patterns here, we just dissolve and the mirroring we dissolve and <laughs> the patterns and oh, all these extrudes we dissolve. Cool. Okay. So very nice. Now you see, this is actually not too bad. This is pretty good. The only thing maybe left to do is one, two, three, four, five, and six have a small foot on it. So um, let's do that. This is actually going to be quite easy because we have this ground sketch here. There's one and two. So to this sketch, double click, zoom in. I go to here, I have this line and I can go with the circle go to here in the midpoint, drag this out. So this is one inch, 0.8 is okay. Dimension, hue, 0.8 now. So it's specified, this is, the circle is glued onto the midpoint of this line. This line is glued onto the midpoints of these lines. So when I press escape, I can't move this around. Perfect. Now I need to figure out the correct orientation. Now so this has to go down. We will say by a quarter inch, minus 0.25. Very good. That's quite noticeable. This edge I would like to round. Look, there's a fillet command. There. Uh, 0.25 divided by 2. Look, we can do very basic math. Pretty cool. Then I know this is 29.5 for this one. So I will mirror this over. Which direction we use first? Uh, doesn't really matter. There we are. And then pattern this direction. So minus. 29.5, two pieces, very good. And then here I have the other two, which now I mirror over to the other side. You notice the steps are actually very repetitive. That's the cool thing about 3D modeling. There isn't really that much to do, learn. It's just, it's all pretty, pretty simple. It's very repetitive. You just need to know how, how the structure works. Okay, very nice. So now we have everything on the ground. Um, yeah, being there. Okay, uh, new group for these pieces. There we see all the stuff now. Yeah, pretty nice, no? Okay, okay. So that's in the way how you can build actually this piece if we want to be. If we want to be very specific, we can actually turn on all the sketches we want and all the objects, select everything and then go move. And um, this whole thing, we should move up. Ah, okay, this doesn't work. Perfect. Shouldn't have said that. Um, so maybe let's see when we select all these objects. Let's hide the sketch. One more time. There. There we bring this up 0.25. 
Cool. Now this is important if we want to be very specific that this sits on the ground plane. Um, now this is obviously slightly disconnected now with the sketch. So for example, uh, here this sketch is now quarter inch below. So we could go ahead and move the sketch up or we can also move the sketch possibly up by 0.252. There we see it now while we bring this back. This frame on the bottom we can keep where it is or even that one. Let's see if we move this one up by 0.25. Interestingly at the beginning not all at the same time was possible to be moved but you see here step by step I re uh, readjusted everything. Yeah, that's it. Perfect.